Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from chapter 6 of Mr. Sedra's book on electronic devices. And here I will be solving example 6.7 and exercise questions 6.25, 6.26. So before we start, let's just recap these two situations we had learned earlier that for a transistor to be in saturation mode, the base emitter junction has to be forward bias and base collector junction also forward bias. But to be in active mode, the base emitter junction has to be forward bias, but base collector has to be reverse bias. So what we can conclude from here that if we only know the base emitter voltage to be forward bias, then we cannot say whether the transistor is in saturation mode or in active mode unless we know the base collector voltage. With this knowledge, now let's uh, see example 6.7 uh, and we try to solve it in our own understanding, with our own understanding. We have to analyze the circuit to determine the voltages at all nodes and currents through all branches. So all voltages we have to find, that is VB, VC, VE, and IB, IC, IE. First of all, I prefer to draw this diagram. Uh, now this is a PNP transistor. So for PNP transistor, this will be the arrangement. The emitter base has to be 0 0.7 and forward bias. The base collector to be a reverse bias for being in active mode. So let's see what is the situation here. I have marked all the voltages VE, VC, VB and IE, IC, IB. These are the parameters that we have to find. These five parameters, VB we already know, it is zero. Okay, so we know that VEB is 0 0.7 volt. This is assumed it is always 0 0.7 volt base emitter. And from here we can find VE. VE will be VB plus this voltage or uh, we, from here we can write that VE, VE minus VB will be VEB. So from here VE can be calculated to be 0 0.7 volt, VB 0 0.7, VB is ground 0. And now we can calculate the emitter current. Now that we know this is 0 0.7, so 10 minus 0 0.7 divided by this resistance. 10 minus 0 0.7 divided by 2 is 4.65 milliampere. This is the emitter current. So one parameter we have found here and the other parameter we found VE. So if you don't know whether the transistor is in active mode or in saturation mode, then the technique that is followed is that we assume it to be in active mode and then uh, find the parameters. And if they do not match, then we assume it to be in saturation mode and find the parameters. So that is what we'll do here. We have the current IE and we have found the voltage VE. Now the other parameters. Since the base emitter junction is forward biased, so this is forward biased, the transistor will be either in active mode or in saturation mode. So in this case, as we mentioned, we have to first assume it to be in active mode. So assuming the transistor to be in active mode, and when the transistor is in active mode, then all these formulas, they are applicable. So we'll use this formula now to find the other parameters. IC is alpha IE, IE we already know, alpha we don't know. Alpha can be calculated from beta. This formula, we assume beta to be 100 because it is not given. So we assume it to be 100. And so alpha is 0 0.99. And now putting in the values, IC is 0 0.99 into IE. 
which is 4.6 milli ampere. IC found, now we can find the collector voltage VC, from here you can see VC minus VE dash is ICRC, VC minus VE dash ICRC, from here VC is minus 5.4 volt. So this is minus 5.4 volt and now you can see that this is a reverse bias because this is negative and this is zero. So it is reverse bias, that means the transistor is definitely in active mode. It is now confirmed that the collector base junction is reverse bias by uh, 5.4 volt and the transistor is indeed in active mode. And so the, the formulas that we have mentioned are applicable. So the only parameters now left is IB. So from this formula, we can calculate IB. So IB will be IC over beta. IC we know, beta we know. So IB is 0 0.046 milliampere. So this is the answer. Now we come to uh, exercise 6.25. For the circuit in figure 6.25, find the largest value of RC that can be while the transistor remains in active mode. So we have to find the value of RC. From this formula, we can find VE. Look, this is grounded. We know this is 0 0.7. So VE will be 0 0.70 plus VEB is equal to VE. That is VE is 0 0.7 volt. This graph is very important to determine the limit for active mode. For this was this is for NPN transistor given in the book. Now for PNP, only thing we have to modify it here that for VCB we have to write VBC. So VBC can be the lowest value of VBC can be minus four. So this we have to keep in mind. And coming on to this graph, this is given, and we see that BBC can be minus 4. The lowest is minus 4. It has to be greater than minus 0.4. That means it, it can be uh, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.2, 0, plus 1, 2, 3, etc. So this is the minimum value. And if this is the minimum, minimum value, then BEC uh, will be 0 0.3 uh, or greater. How do we calculate? We can calculate from here. This voltage minus VBC, then minus VEB and plus VEC, putting in the value minus 0.4 minus uh, 0 0.7, so VEC is 0 0.3. And we are saying that this is the lowest value of VEC. It has to be greater than 0.3. Uh, so we write here VEC has to be greater than 0.3. Now if you have doubt why you are putting greater sign here, you can just plug in some other value. Let's say it is instead of minus 4, it's minus 1. Minus 0.1, then VEC will be uh, 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 0.6. So this is that is what we are saying that VEC has to be greater than 0.3. It could be 0 0.4, 5, 6. So this is our last limit. And so we put here VEC to be 0.3. Now we know VE 0.7. We know VEC has to be equal to a greater than 0.3. Therefore, VC from here we can find to be 0 0.4. So VC is VE minus 0.3. 0 0.4. So VC will be 0 0.4. And the maximum value now we can find that RC is VC minus V0 over IC. We don't know IC. IC can be found from this formula. 
we don't know IE. So let's first of all find IE. IE from here can be found 10 minus 0 0.7 divided by 2K, 4.65. Alpha, as in the last question, we'll uh, assume it, assume a beta of 100 and then find alpha. So alpha will be 0 0.99. And now putting in the value here, IC is 4.6 milliampere. Now that we have found IC, we know VC, we know this voltage, and so RC can be found. RC maximum is VC minus V minus divided by IC and putting all the values. This value comes to be 2.26 kilo ohm. So this is question uh, 6.25. Now let's see 6.26. Redesign the circuit. That means find new value of RERC. To establish a current of 1 milliampere, collector current 1 milliampere, and a reverse bias on the collector base junction of 4 volt. Now this voltage will be 4 volt. Assume alpha to be 1. Now this diagram again here now definitely it is no more power minus 4 it is actually 4 given here reverse voltage 4 volt IC is given 1 milliampere from IC we can calculate IE IC over alpha 1 milliampere divided by alpha is given 1 so IE is also 1 milliampere so we we'll put these two values. VEB we know 0 0.7. VBC is given 4 volt. So from base collector junction, base collector junction, 0 that is VB plus VBC 4 is equal to VC. So VC will be 4 volt. This voltage VC 4 volt. So from here we can find RC. Now we know VC, we know this voltage. 10, we know this current. So RC will be 4 minus minus 10 divided by 1 milli is equal to 6 kilo. Now we come to the base emitter junction or emitter base junction. 0, 0 minus 0 0.7. Maybe this is a minus sign first is equal to VE. So VE is equal to 0 0.7. VE 0 0.7, we can now calculate RE from this loop. So RE is 10 minus 0 0.7 divided by 1 milli is 9.3 kilo. So I hope you have been able, able to follow this and you should be able to solve such type of a question of especially PNP transistors. Thank you.